Harry and I are going to join forces and do a little educational bit now. <laughs> Woo! I love it! This is awesome! We'll bring the chakras in. Yeah! Yeah, let's bring the chakras in. Integration is a perfect word. In general. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> and, and that was what was striking me actually about our previous interview, the connections that we were drawing. There was some real integration happening there in a way that made more sense to me now. Wow. And made and helped me make sense of what Back to the City is or, or kind of strives to be. Wow. Because drawing these connections across an artist's creative life and bringing different things into juxtaposition really relates to the type of work, the integration work that say if one studies yoga philosophy or thinks about the chakras and the different work to be done with each chakra, that's integration. So I have a bunch of books here. <laughs> um, one of the <gasps> first one, maybe you have the same book, Anna Dia Right Jesus. there. Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Eastern body, Western mind, psychology and the chakra system as a path to the self. Um, near the beginning of Anadia Judith's highly recommended book, um, there's a, within one of the chapters, the human biocomputer. And this is the same metaphor that one would encounter in Caroline Mace's. You know, Car are you, do you? Yes, I don't have that book, but is, I like her a lot. Yeah, this is, if anyone is interested in delving further into this framework, which we're going to be relating to the songs, then Anadia Judith and Caroline Mace, May, is that how one pronounces it? I think so. But it's spelled yeah. M-Y-S-S-S. -S. Yeah. Um, this is a really concise and relatable introduction. And it's, it's called Why People Don't Heal and How They Can. And to be obviously slightly reductive, chakras <laughs> yes. could, be, could be the answer to like awareness of the chakra system both of these books use the analogy for western readers of a of a, a computer um as i was saying for anadia judith the human biocomputer the chakra system is an evolutionary program and can be used to reprogram our lives if we can learn this on an individual level, perhaps we can apply the same methods to our culture and environment. I just, as I was revisiting some of these, these books, those couple of sentences jumped out at me in relation to your music. So I'll just, well, I'll read them again. And I wonder whether we can have the integrating of the record be informed by the chakra system, which we to some extent simultaneously share <laughs> with viewers. So the chakra system is an evolution. Amazing. Program. Yeah, <laughs> so we're on board. Um, I like this collaboration. The chakra system is an evolutionary program and can be used to reprogram our lives. If we can learn this on an individual level, perhaps we can apply the same methods to our culture and environment. Yes. The song, Holy Bones, mm -hmm. um, take your rings off, take your skin off, stand in your holy bones. Mm -hmm. So all the bones can be holy, but <laughs> there's a particular uh, bone. Um, and this is where the snow comes in mm -hmm. too. So I was saying if on the, on the one hand, we were previously barefoot in the sand, mm -hmm. flexing our ankles, uh, what's happening in the snow <laughs> now? Now you're buried up to your sacrum. Yeah, and what's your snow? I love this fact that holy bones, sacrum, you know, that maybe there's an etymological link to sacred. Yeah, yeah. possibly. Probably. It's, I mean, they sound yeah. the, the same. I'm supposed to know that I'm a, I'm a literature professor. Yeah, I should think. you should. <laughs> but so they sound the same. No. Yeah. So, yeah, sa the sacrum is, um, you know, right right above your tailbone. Yes. You know, it's yeah. like a, it looks like the It looks like a shell or it looks like a... It looks kind of like a turtle shell. Yeah. Or it's almost like heart shaped in a way. Ah, and there's a reference to the turtle shell yeah. uh, in the song that you are about to play yes. in the studio. I mm -hmm. heard you play it a little bit. Uh, yeah. You know, is it before before the interview? Um, the turtle shell will show up 
uh, as something that we travel with mm -hmm. um, when we uh, when we move beyond Duluth, leaving leaving some shit in in, in Duluth. The song's called "Shit I Left in Duluth," and yep. it's, it's going to be the opening track to the new EP. Mm -hmm. So uh, Mary's like getting mentally ready to to perform that song in a, in a in a few minutes, but uh, the turtle shell. Uh, what's the significance of the turtle shell? Because you just used it as like the vehicle right. in this metaphor, and then That's it's crazy. in the song that you're about to play as well. You just brought me to that. So the sacrum is, it looks like a turtle shell. A turtle. Sh the sacrum is like also in chakras, if you... Oh, yes. Um, yeah. So there's a sacral chakra, the root chakra. Okay. Or, um, yeah. Well, the root chakra and the sacral chakra. But anyway, they're, they're very like basic needs chakras, like very okay. low... Um, um, low in the body, like yeah. like grounding and creativity, yep. and you know every. <laughs> uh, so then, like the turtle shell is like the home on wheels, you know, or the home on yes. your, you know, that's like yeah, it, like your backpack. It's like your house on your back, you know, yeah. not on wheels, but you know what I mean. So yeah, so maybe um, the turtle shell, <laughs> you relate it to grandness or having your basic yeah, needs, totally. like the essentials. Like with you yeah. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Like in your body. Mm -hmm. um, even like w with the idea of, you know, this particular totally. holy bone. But so yeah. is that the holiest bone? Is that, the, does that have a special <laughs> significance? Or? Huh. It's my favorite bone. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's the holiest bone. That's a yeah. good question. There seems, so it seems to be there's a journey throughout the, the records to do with like being to oneness with one's body mm -hmm. um there's this but there's a spiritual journey too mm -hmm. has the shift to I, so i promise that you know we'd look at some of the lyrics and think about what the lyrics reveal alongside the difference in you know, how things sound mm -hmm. and this quest to do with the mind and the body or the body and the spirit um, does it have a different quality on Holy Bones and then also on the, the EP, you know, contribute to the fun, mm. to the Kickstarter, <laughs> everyone? Yes, please do. <laughs> um, the question, so does my relationship, my idea about the body change? Yeah, so or, or how the ideal relationship between the body mm. and something else, whether it's the mind or the spirit. Huh. Um, I think it is moving um, again towards more acceptance. Yes, exactly. Yeah, Accepting of, the body. Yep. Um, yeah. Where before, you know, I've always had a little some issues, you know. Yes. <laughs> and, and, yes. Um, and you know, they they crop up every once in a while, but but it's it is like with yoga too. It's about uh, unity, unifying body, mind, spirit. Yeah. So I feel like I'm obsessed with this, and it's barely like the tip of the iceberg. Just. I feel like I know nothing, and the more that I'm learning, the more there is, and it's fa it's fantastic. But it's my so, too. yeah, yeah. So hopefully, the experience of the viewer, whether the viewer is seeing us like at the top of an iceberg, and they know that there's all the stuff beneath, or whether this is very alien, and this might be, you know, somebody's way in. If it is. There's a lot of iceberg beneath. <laughs> yes, and it's so cool. <laughs> and it facilitates healing. It's a container. Yeah. This is an ancient system. Mm -hmm. Give it a go. Because it helps Mary, it helps me. So, yeah. <laughs> and, and many others. Yes. Um, so you can think of, for any new, new, new friends to this chakra system out there, um, there are many chakras, but... There are seven that are uh, very spoken of and, and taught about. Um, and so the chakras, you can think of like spinning wheels. Chakra means wheel. So think of like a spinning wheel of, of energy that lines up in the center of your body, kind of in front of your spine, along your spine. And there's a central channel um, where they are sit. It's called the shushumna. And these spinning wheel also they are um, in different places where our nerve plexus there. So it's like the root and the sacrum and the solar plexus. So it's like nerve, lots of nerves coming. The heart, the throat, oh, yeah. third eye. Yes, 
and then yeah hearts in the center rather than heart heart but and then um crown of the head kind of hovering but then there are other ones in different lineages too um but each chakra has a color and a an age of development and different um earth elements uh earth air fire water ether um and many different like psychological um balanced and imbalanced dysfunction and overactive you know and so like you think of like a wheel that's spinning along perfectly on its axis and then it gets tipped one way because it's over excess or the other so so in relation to this album i've never really put the chakras on top of this album so this is really cool yeah. um but yeah. i would say like the title the world is your lover of course for mm -hmm. me it is the heart mm -hmm. that's like the love, you know, hearts is, you know, you would think love, compassion, um, forgiveness, all, all the romantic love, friendship love, all relationships there. Um, so like the world is your lover is all the experiences that we live through, everything, this too must, must be Shakti, everything that's coming mm -hmm. in can be uh, transformative and like like that Leonard Cohen line, I keep I keep quoting the um, there's a crack in everything, and that's where the light gets in, and you know these expanding the light in our awareness into the shadowy corners and just growing this awareness of like our mistakes, other people's mistakes, so we can like hold more love and like compassion. So that's like the heart of the album is like coming to, you know, just so frustrated and so disappointed and so in a mire, but then throwing up the hands and, and um, forgiving your life <laughs> so that you can, you know, there's like so much talk about letting go and a lot of like things with the chakras are like, you can, you can, there's another philosophy. Have you, have you heard about the Granthis yet? Have you Ooh, I'm at the very, 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 very tip of that iceberg. Yeah. <laughs> So the granthis, so chakras have uh, locks, like you can lock at the um, the mula, the muladhara, the root chakra, you can lock. Um, you can lock um, at the navel and you can lock at the throat. Mm -hmm. And then there are n knots where energy is constricted and those are called granthis. Mm. And there is the Brahma granthi, Vishnu granthi, and Sh uh, Shiva granthi. Mm -hmm. And um, I hope I'm saying that right. Three of them. But so that is where um, the life force energy, so Kundalini, yeah. like this, the coiled latent super cell of awareness that's dormant at the base of the spine mm -hmm. um, comes slowly and these knots keep that from rising too quickly, like they're mm -hmm. protective, yep. but they can also be holding on. Yes. So in, in our awareness, we're slowly untying these knots of holding Let's so that the Kundalini can rise. Letting go specifically of that. Yeah. Just like an internal letting go. Letting go of attachment to certain aspects of one's identity that are purely egoic. And the ego is definitely something we're going to talk about, which is related to chakra three. So the ego has a very bad reputation, of course. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Can't take it anywhere. It has a bad reputation because of its bad behavior. Yes. <laughs> and we're quoting, uh, well, I'm quoting, Perhaps, perhaps my favorite song on the record, actually, perhaps my favorite song in general at the moment, because I, the ego, you know, I, I, I kind of, I love the ego. The ego is an important part of the spiritual anatomy. And chakra three, which is the solar plexus, right before the heart, which we've just been talking mm -hmm. about, in terms of the identity that is related to each of these chakras, ego identity, is related to this third chakra, which is related to shame and self-definition. The central issue here is power or will. We have lots of lessons to learn here. Mm -hmm. And it's to do with the way in which we navigate in what we generally speak of as the world. <laughs> yeah. And 
there is a risk in being excessively damning of the bad ego and its bad behavior that we do not allow ourselves to learn these lessons and to cultivate and to cultivate you know, a strong ego identity and to we, we talk about taking back one's power this mm-hmm. this chakra the third chakra is going to be where a lot of that true taking back of one's power will be occurring yep yeah so that it has all been very important for me and i think i'm sure for many people working with this system mm-hmm. and i hear it in your songs especially in the song which is specifically about the ego so could you expand either with that song or any of your songs let's look at them through the the lens of manipura the, the third chakra sure um so yeah my ego is huge is the song my ego is huge my ego is bruised can't take it anywhere can't sit with it at the table it's like a, the slippery slope with me of like feeling so sensitive and like everything is like putting up this shield of defense because i need to protect my, my tiny fragile ego yeah. that's like everything is in like a, an assault on it you know and i'm like ah like just like too much and then part of me that's or, or like i deserve this pain and sorrow because i'm worthless like it's I'm like bad. this self-loathe kind yeah. of thing and then but then the other hand is like no look at all the work i've done yeah i've like busted my ass i deserve this i you know i'm like ah. and so it's like this like teetery kind of like and this is like mur, 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 ego just little ego big ego um what is it the freud id and super ego and mm. then there's the healthy ego right <laughs> so the id is like and always grasping, always wanting, hoarding, selfish, like me, 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 like Appetitive. yes. And then the disciplinarian, <laughs> like nothing is good enough. You, it's just a constant swirl, right? But then behind that is this pure awareness of mm-hmm. s- calm, or we could say s- sattva, another beautiful um, term of balance so i mean everything we're never going to be fully in balance if we're growing and you know it's always coming in and out but like you can with this awareness we can start to see like oh that's my ego <laughs> to be able to say my ego is huge there's obviously there's a possibility that the part of the self that is saying my ego is huge is not the ego in which case what is it and just, <laughs> but there's also the possibility that the part that's saying my ego is huge is the ego. <laughs> uh, and in my experience, it's only something as complex and nuanced and ancient as the chakra system that provides some kind of compass and a map to navigating this complexity. Uh, because the ego is also the part that insists on speaking its truth. And if we are... Uh, and there is of course a strong strand in our in our culture that's just ego bashing like the you know obviously the default position is to dislike the ego and to not want to be considered to be egoic mm-hmm. sure <laughs> yeah generally, generally it would be considered an insult to say you know and and not many songwriters are writing songs <laughs> <laughs> about their own ego being huge. <laughs> <laughs> However, what if the ego, what if it's that, I mean, it could be huge in like an arrogance, like, like, ah, I'm so awesome. Or I think it could also be my ego is huge and it's so like hugely taking up my brain that it's like um, devalued. Like the the immensity of like, the 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 shadow of the ego yes of that like worthlessness and i think that's what so um you know this sort of like oh i want this but i'm not good enough i think that's kind of the perspective i was coming from yeah yeah and that's what i went into yoga for ah because i was like 
what is this? Like, this is nonsense and it's painful. And it's this attachment to like, well, both like feeling unworthy of success, um, but feeling like deserving of more success. You know, it's like this constant. Yeah. And just trying to get behind that and just see that for what it is, which is distortion. <laughs> if we had no ego, we would have no identity. We would have no sense of self. Right. Or at least the sense of self that we had would not help us to navigate in what is generally considered to be reality <laughs> right. no matter what metaphysically is the case i love the way in which all of these songs develop the the little twists and added nuances so after the first chorus of my ego is huge can't hide it under a bushel can't lock it up in a room can't sit with it at its table insists on speaking its truth so we can't hide the ego and of course we want to be accepted you know we want to socially we want to fit in we're aware that if we are seen to be um greedy and ego driven then we'll be considered bad and we don't yeah. want to be considered bad so we try and hide <laughs> we try and hide this part of ourselves and deny that we have it but we can't and the song is about being unable to do that and this 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 is this problem uh, led you to yoga where where through perhaps yoga philosophy we find some possible solutions to um, to this quandary, to this human quandary. In the song, though, it's not to a philosopher or to a practitioner of yoga that we go to, it's to a shaman. <laughs> and that, I think, is really significant. The sh a shaman is a good person to go to um, if one wants to befriend one's ego, if one wants to experience integration and wholeness. The shaman yes. is kind of outside of this otherwise pretty pervasive ego bashing culture. And what needs this ego just needs to, in the song, the ego needs to be taken back from the ledge yeah. of the delusional hell. Yes. So, so what's the significance of the, the lyric about the shaman and especially perhaps in the song immediately prior to a song called Hawaii. Wow, I never really put those two together. Look at you helping me out here, <laughs> analyzing my own. <laughs> so in a way I was playing with my ego was being a little judgy of this white woman spirituality that I'm very embedded in that is, um, seeking sh these all you know shamans and things like that and 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 just you know because we're sort of insatiable and constantly mm. seeking you know and so there's this sort of like and i i have it in myself this sort of like grabbing this trying this trying this try this this you know the witch doctor the hip hypnotist the you know the shaman the so and part of it was the realm of cultural appropriation of course there can be a very ego-driven, appetitive approach to spirituality. And if we just want yes. to fix, then, yes. then these spiritual terms and these uh, and the practices even can be used and weaponized even as well. Yes, yes. And um, so I, I had written that song in sort of a commentary of, of that more, but then <laughs> Sometimes my songs lead to things actually happening, and then I, in Bali, saw a shaman. I was, I actually, I led a retreat in Bali in March of 2020, mm -hmm. right as the pandemic began exploding, and yeah. we had had to leave early from Bali. But somehow, miraculously, my retreat happened. My guests bought me. Um, a four hour session with a shaman in mm. Bali and it was incredible and um, unexpected. I, I wasn't planning on that um, mm. and it was a gift. So I, I, I went and it was profound and I worked with the, he gave me a, a forgiveness and a, let of, it was a forgiveness, letting go and happiness manifestation prayer 
to do every day. Uh, and I did it actually every day of 2020 and it, uh, it was profound. And then upon returning to the States, I met another shaman and you know, I, again, it was unexpected. That's such an interesting case in point of, um, in the, in the song, my ego is huge. There's a kind of poking fun at yourself, um, at the aspect of yourself that identifies as a Western w white woman engaging in spirituality. Oh, you know, it's kind of a hip thing to go and see a shaman. Mm -hmm. And, and yet yeah, then this meaningful integration happens through kind of forces beyond yourself with a shaman. Yeah. Uh, shamans work with the chakra system too. Mm hmm But the way in which a shaman does is there's such a focus on wholeness and integration and respect of all the parts. So for me, it just it makes complete sense that the shaman uh, is who, who one goes to with about the ego problem in the sun. Um, yes. Perhaps. Wonderful. Yeah, it's the, in my urban shaman book. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> yes! The reason why I thought it was interesting that the song uh, My Ego is Huge is right before the song Hawaii uh, is because specifically with Hawaiian shamanism, if we're in a predicament where there's a person who was emotionally upset, perhaps this jerk, a male jerk who, who doesn't do any work on himself, and is quite emotionally dysregulated and has no interest in hearing about the chakra system. Um, <laughs> we know you're out there. No. <laughs> there's, um, rather than being helped to build a strong psychic shield to protect yourself from such a person, the adventurer shaman in the Hawaiian shamanism tradition uh, would be more likely to teach you how to harmonize your energy so that you can remain calm and even become a source of healing for the other person. What, do you have any thoughts about that in relation to your music? Yeah, well, in January of 2020, I um, went on a journey to Rishikesh, India, and I studied for an intensive month um, Nada Yoga, which is the yoga of sound. So it's transformation through the flow of sound working with sound, music, vibration, mantra, words, nature sounds, um, tones, our own inner humming. Um, so to harmonize our beings, our, our cells, our vibration with the greater vibration around us. So we've all felt it when we are feeling peaceful and in harmony with our environment and our morning, our day, if we're feeling more peaceful, that, I mean, not always, when we interact with other beings, maybe if they're not in a peaceful state, it's gonna be a clash. But you know, for the most part, if we're coming with a peaceful state and we can stay in tune with ourselves, then, I mean, hopefully that vibrates out and is, is a healing, force um a calming force for others um so i think like traditions i mean again tip of the iceberg but there's so much really pointing towards harmony and this like soft attachment you know having you know having our foundation our our structure with the chakras with what whatever system having that Strong, strong enough so that when we go through things, we can come back to center a little faster, you know, because because we are, have that that strength already there, and that's why the ego we want to kill it, but we you know we do need it. Absolutely, when we're kind of on this iceberg, uh, let's speak briefly mm -hmm. about songs for Savasana. Yes. So, oh, yay your EP, Songs for Savasana and Unending Bliss. So bliss is a term which is both in the title of that EP and also in the lyrics of the title track to the recent album. And it's all about seeking bliss. That's what this is you know, in The World Is Your Lover. 
Yes. You've got to follow your bliss. <laughs>